No Clark, thank you very much indeed for being with us today on East London Lines today. Thank it's you. much appreciated. You're a well-known actor, writer and director. You're also a Doctor Who, a Who action figure toy, I hope you don't mind me saying. And you also provided the raw material for David Cameron's uh, reported comment, Hud uh, Hug a Hoodie. Indeed. So you had a huge impact on British culture. How does that feel for you? Um, well, I mean, it, it's, it's not something that you, you set out to do, you know. Um, I just wanted to act all my life and then so happens I ended up in two shows that were shows that were being brought back after a number of years. And I, I think that gave me a, a bit of a mainstream audience. And then, you know, the film I wrote just happened to be very timely. Um, for me, because I wrote it in 2001. So for me, it was kind of, why aren't people paying attention yeah. to this stuff? And I wrote it and by the time it got made, five years later, the stuff I was writing about five years previous was really hitting the mainstream and it just kind of, I think it just came at the right time. We'll come back to that. But obviously you're very famous for Doctor Who. It was a huge yeah, success. You were in the first episode of A New Incarnation. Was, yeah. uh, my 11 year old son wanted this entire interview to be about Doctor Who, but we're <laughs> going to try and avoid that. But for us as a family, it means getting together around the TV set sure. together as a family a uh, Saturday evening. It's a yeah. big thing for us. What does Doctor Who mean to you? Um, the, the, the same sort of thing. When I was, when I was younger, um, you know, it was something that um, my mother watched with me and then you know I watched it for a little bit um, up until Peter Davison and then kind of it, it, it lost its for me it lost its way and I stopped watching um, but it was always something that, I, that I'd loved and when it was when it was returning and I was casting it, it I didn't have any doubts at all there was a lot of doubters a lot of people yeah. were like oh it's, they're waiting for it to fail and stuff like that and pe some people weren't sure about Billy um, you know but then they were sure about Chris Eggleston and then I think I was announced as, as third or fourth person and people weren't really sure what was going to happen because I'd just come off Abby the same pet. Um, but I had no doubts in my mind and, you know, sure there were the early, the early stuff is not as polished as it is now, yeah. but people weren't sure it was going to be as big as it is. Yeah, but you know, I mean, David Tennant said that it was a life-changing experience and I was just wondering, you're very well known for Doctor Who, can, can you actually walk anywhere without being mobbed by adoring fans? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can go anywhere and not be mobbed. It's great. I, yeah, I, I pretty much get left alone, I think. I think. And for David, David, I always wanted to act. David always wanted to be Doctor Who. Mm. That's like, you know, l actually living your dream. And I am doing that because I act as well. But that's, that's his, that he wanted to do that. And, you know, he got to do it. So that's amazing. Great. And it's clear who the audience is for Doctor Who. And when you move to kid adulthood and adulthood, they're, they're altogether different. And, and some of your fiercest critics have said that the films pandered to middle-class voyeurism. But, but what do you say about the films? Who were the films for in your view? <laughs> Funny you say that comment, because he's the one guy, which I know you know, he's the one guy in every sort of, every sort of, inter every sort of review, every sort of interview, every sort of thing. I really, they're kind of water off a duck's back, but he's the one guy that annoys me because he actually knew me a little bit mm -hmm. and only from, only from work and, and tried to make out like he knew me more than work and thus was saying I wasn't like that, I was actually like this mm -hmm. and it was all fake and the truth is that when you're at work you behave a certain way, yeah. when you're living in a council estate outside of work and you're trying to live your life and get by and you know provide you behave a different way and you know he was trying to make, make it out like he knew me more than he did. Um, but, so that's the only thing that's ever really annoyed me. Um, other criticism, I don't, I don't care. People, people are allowed their opinions. That's the whole point. But for me, the film was, mm -hmm. for me, the film when I wrote it was just the film, it was just something I wanted, wanted to write. Uh, at that time, I wasn't a writer, so there was no intention of, I'm going to write a right. script to get made. I just wrote this film and someone read it and said, man, this is good. You should, you should uh, take it to your agency. And then another friend of mine gave it to a director he knew. And that director was in LA and he flew back from LA and said, I want to make this mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. and, and then he made, he made the film, mm -hmm. we got it made. No, right. but nobody wanted to do it. It right. was made privately. Well, let, let's move on to the films. And I was just wondering, do you think your films offer a message of hope or, or are they just a mirror of unrelenting violence? I think the films offer not just the hopelessness, they offer the hopefulness. Um, uh, basically, both films have a moral message. Um, I think a lot of people dismissed or didn't want to see or miss the message in kiddohood which was basically if you behave like this and you get involved in these sorts of people you could die that was the message yeah. <clears throat> a lot of media detractors and people that wanted to only see the negative 
particularly the, the dicks at the Daily Mail. Yeah. Basically wanted to make it out like it was just about another young black man getting killed mm -hmm. on the street when it's not that it's saying if you behave like this this could happen so adulthood was written to to counteract that and basically was me saying to all those those people that well if you think that that if you think that kid adulthood is reflective and a cause of the stuff that's happening in society then adulthood showing that you can walk away from that life is the repair and all of them almost all of them shut their mouths very quickly and very sharp sharply yeah. and the film was a phenomenal success and absolutely and I, I think people now see the overall story so bearing that in mind do you think it would be fair to say that for young people in deprived parts of london i mean you're actually a role model for them no i'm a role model for my son only i don't I don't, I don't pander to being a role model for anyone else mm -hmm. because I, I'm not, I swear, mm -hmm. you know, I'm lazy. In your yeah, I, but I swear in real life too, mm -hmm. I'm lazy, I, I, I speak my mind, which is arguably not a bad thing. Um, but I definitely don't see myself or ever class myself as a role model. I definitely wouldn't want any young kid looking up to me. Um, but as long as I can raise my son and make him proud, then, then that's, for me, that's what's important. So 4 three, two, one was a complete change of direction in many ways again, a kind yeah. of girl pad heist inspired perhaps by Pulp Fiction, and it got a mixed reception. But I have to ask you two questions. I mean, there's some great lines in it, like you took my virginity and then you took my shopping. Yeah. I thought it was a brilliant line. Yeah. But a lot of comment has been made about one particular lesbian scene. Yeah. What was the point behind that? The point behind the lesbian scene was, I guess, the same as any film that's got a scene like that in there. It was. Arguably, you could lose it, but it it was just two characters in having fun. I don't I don't think if it was a man and a woman, there would be half the comments there were. Arguably, it went on a little bit too long, but for me, the point was there's a there's a clear audience of people that that we have, and making a film that was in such a different direction to to the previous films, and almost kind of not alienating, but making a film that wasn't quite targeted at that that audience, the male sort of yeah, we want to see this. There was elements in 4321 that I felt had to have moments in it that would still target those those people. And that scene's in there for no other reason. It doesn't need to be in there at all. But I could, I could, you know, those people that say that, I could pick out any of the films that they like and say, well, that scene doesn't need to be there. That scene doesn't need to be there. You know, I watched a, a film which I quite like called Red Road by Andrew Arnold. Mm -hmm. She has some very explicit yeah. stuff in there that doesn't need to be there. It, you, it could be suggested, but it's there. Okay, and one last question, if it's okay. I, I think unusually, you use movie titles for personal messages. There's your point about we challenges and all sorts of things. Uh, but it's clear from those titles that your mum means a lot to you. And I know that your parents uh, originally came from uh, Sweet T and T, Trinidad and yeah. Tobago. I, I lived there for a long time as oh, well. Really? Yeah, and uh, well, I, use, I use movie titles as personal messages. How, what do you mean? Well, you, you write messages to your friends, your mum, and saying thank you to a lot of people. Oh, Russell right, T yeah. Davies, I looked, yeah. I learned. In the end, Christmas, yeah. yeah so right. I was just, I was just wondering about T and T. I was wondering if you've, you've explored. You are a British cultural icon. Yeah. You've explored um, so many things. Are you interested in ever exploring your Trinidad roots? Could you ever be a modern day Sam Selvin? Right, yeah. Uh, well, finally, you should say that, because I tried to option that book. Um, uh, what's, it, what's it called again? Uh, Lonely London. Yeah, I tried to option that book, Lonely Londoners, um, but it's, it's been proven very difficult, because uh, I think it would make a great, a great film, and what I would think a, a positive film for people of, of colour over here. But, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't taken my son there, but, you know, my, you know, my wife knows about Trinidad. Obviously, I've been there a few times, you know. Uh, my grandmother still lives there, one of my grandmothers, so it's all good, yeah. Wonderful country. Well, look, no Clark, thank you so much for thank appearing with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And thanks for being at Goldsmiths. Cheers. Cheers.